All right, so I went through culture shock when I was 19 years old and moved down to Texas. And then I did it again six years ago when I came from Texas to Israel. But one of the um, amusing things that I uh, saw when I went to Texas as a 19-year-old is that I noticed that when uh, people have a conversation, like when somebody would say, how you doing? How's it going? In Texas, <laughs> uh, the answer would be something like, uh, I'll tell you what. And then they wouldn't say anything. Like, that was their answer. So I found that just so humorous that it was kind of a, a commiserating. There would be this body language, like shaking the head and uh, sighing. And it's like, so how you doing? I'll tell you what. And do you know, <laughs> the same thing happened to me when I came to Israel. I would hear people and they would say, um, how you doing? How's it going? And the answer would be, thank God. Praise God. In Hebrew, it's Baruch Hashem. So if you come to Israel and you're just walking around the streets, I guarantee you'll hear this dozens of times because it's said over and over. It doesn't matter what you ask people. You say, um, how are the kids? Baruch Hashem. Um, how's your mom? Baruch Hashem. How's the job? Baruch Hashem. It's the answer. It's praise God, bless God. So what we find out with uh, Israel, and I just want to, when I talk about Israel, uh, the, I'm talking about Jacob's family. And the way that I dis describe or explain to my grandkids about who Israel is, we know that there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob had two names, Jacob and Israel. And I say, just like Batman has two names, he's Bruce Wayne and Batman, and Superman has two names, he's Clark Kent and Superman. Well, Jacob has two names, he's Jacob and Israel. So Jacob or Israel's family, they got into a lot of trouble when they would commiserate, when they complained about anything. So we are supposed to, they're like the big brother. We're supposed to kind of learn from their mistakes. God was training them to be the kind of people that he wanted them to be. And then we're supposed to learn from them. They're the teachers. The Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jews are the light to the nations. They're the teachers. But they had to go through everything with God and get in trouble were doing things wrong so that the rest of us could learn from their mistakes and when they were like out in the desert and just imagine being out in the desert with your kids and you're thirsty and there's no water and you start complaining because there's no water and everybody's thirsty and they got in trouble for that so Israel has had to learn through the centuries of explaining these stories to their children each generation so now <laughs> when you ask them how they're doing it's Praise God. Like, it's all good. It's all good. And where does this come from? Because we learn this directly from God. When he was creating the world, he said over and over, and God, God saw everything that he had made, and it was good. And it was good. He kept saying it was good. And it was just a process going on. Before it was even finished, he was saying it's good. So he's showing us, he's, he made us in his image, and he wants us to act like him. He wants us to have his attributes. And so if, if he can say it's good, just like um, before something's done, sometimes, you know, if you're um, cleaning out closets or your drawers and it gets worse before it gets better, or when you're remodeling the kitchen, it gets worse before it gets better, um, or sometimes when you're watching a movie and maybe you've read the book and so you know it has a good ending, but in the middle of the movie, it sure doesn't look like it's going to have a good ending. But God is telling us he is outside of time and he knows how everything's going to end. And so he's able to say, it's good. It's good. Wh whatever part you come in on, it's okay. It's good. So when he's in the process of creating the world, 
first day, second day, third day, fourth day, it's not even finished yet, and he keeps saying, it's good. So that's what Israel had to learn, to not complain, no matter what. You were supposed to thank God and just know in the end, maybe if it doesn't look good yet, it's all going to be good, because, you know, and I... I could think, you know, like, that, that doesn't seem like normal, that it seems like they're not in, like, they're out of touch with reality, but that's the funny part that I've learned, is that the only true reality is God, and God is good, and so everything is good, everything is about God, and He is good, and anything that we're going through that doesn't look good, in the end, it will be good, so we're just supposed to, there's a, a story about a man who's um, barn had burned down and the firemen put out the fire and they came and they found him and he's just reading the newspaper and they said why aren't you upset you know your barn just burned down he said yeah I just kind of like fast forwarded I know like a couple years from now that'll all be in the past I'll rebuild the barn it'll all be fine and, and I'll just go on and he goes so I'm kind of like just already getting into that mode of you know oh yeah that was then yeah but I'm over it, and now everything's, you know, he, <laughs> he didn't have to get upset in the moment. Okay, so the nations that are looking at Israel, Israel is like the firstborn son, and so everyone is supposed to learn from the firstborn, and they're being trained by God. I'm going to train you, I'm going to teach you how to act, and then you teach everybody else how to act. And so the, the idea is to do on earth as it is in heaven, bring heaven down to earth, make this world a home for God. And so he starts with Jacob's family, with Israel's family. So what is everybody else supposed to do that uh, is just kind of watching what's going on with them? Well, the first thing that we see is that they are, Israel's family were, went down to Egypt because there was a famine and they went down to Egypt and at first they were welcomed by the Pharaoh and everything was good because of Joseph. Okay, but after a while, there was this Jewish problem. Pharaoh had a problem with Israel's family and there was like, what are we gonna do? I'll tell you what, <laughs> what are we gonna do about these Jews? There's just too many of them. I think we're going to have to get all the males and, and drown the males in, in the Nile River. Okay? So, and it just goes from every great superpower throughout the centuries has had to deal with what are they going to do? What is going to be their attitude or their reaction to Israel and this supernatural thing that is going on with Israel and with their mission in the world. They were given God's wisdom came down from heaven on Mount Sinai and they're given this and it's the Torah and but every single world superpower has had to decide how they feel and how that how they're going to react to this this uh, plan that God has. And so we have, when, when the Jews had their temple, the, the world superpower were the Babylonians. And the Babylonians were like, well, I'll tell you what, we're just going to have to destroy their temple. I don't know who these people are, but they, they got to go. We just got to destroy their temple. And then the Persians come along, and we have Haman. And Haman is like, ah, oh, the Jews, I'll tell you what. You know, they're, they're just all going to have to, they're just strange people. They're just all going to, we're just going to choose a day that they're all going to be killed. And this goes on. The Greeks come along and the Greeks are like, who are these Jews? What is this thing with modesty and women's family purity? And uh, we need to defile these women. Like they can't be doing all this weird stuff that would just, uh, and you know, so then a battle took, you know, when the women were, being mistreated then the men took up their swords and so then there's this battle with the Greeks and then after the Greeks it's the Romans and the Romans you know what are we going to do about this Jewish problem 
oh, well, we need to burn down their temple. And the, and the Romans burned down the, the second temple. And, you know, their Torah, their Torah, let's just call that the Old Testament. That's just like, we can't understand it. It doesn't apply. So the Jews, you know, we just, we just need them to just <laughs> go away. So every world superpower, whether it's the Crusaders, whether it's the Spanish Inquisitors, you know, we need to rid the world of these heretics. We need to tell them they need to no lighting Shabbat candles, no doing anything Jewish, no doing anything that's been passed down to you from your forefathers. No, no, no. And so somehow we have these prophecies that say a time is coming when Israel is going to be appreciated and there's going to be this thank God Thank God. Praise God. Wow. We have a Torah. (laughs) The Jews have succeeded in staying alive through supernatural. Thank God. God has kept them alive all this time. They have preserved the Torah. They are succeeding in their mission, supernaturally succeeding. Thank God. (laughs) It's it's prophesied that it's going to happen, but we see like century after century after century, it's doesn't have it's not even close to happening it's like we just need to just do away with these people and every great world superpower then we get to to nazi germany i'll tell you what these jews you know you know the story what they wanted what happened with that and so and now the the jewish people are surrounded by um enemies that want have blown off the map so I think it's just an, an amazing thing of what's happening out there that people are, are saying, thank God, praise God. I want to, I recognize and know that something is going on, something supernatural is going on with Israel, that there's a reason that she's in the world, that this group of people, this less than 1% small group of people are in the world, that they've been preserved when every chance someone had to try to do away with them, they, they you know, every world superpower tried to, to do away with the Jews, and somehow they're still here with the holiday of Purim because Haman tried to get rid of the Jews and the holiday of Hanukkah because the Greeks you know, try to get rid of the Jews. So it's just like we have all these holidays. Um, and Passover is, is interesting because um, now when we teach the, our children the story of what happened and we were taken out of Egypt, there's this um, part that's called the Dayenu. And it's kind of like not only is it like we're not complaining, we're saying... It would have been enough if you only did this, and it would have been enough if you only did that, and God, it would have been enough if you only did that. So we're like super, super, super thankful because after getting in trouble so many times for, I think it's in Hebrew, it's called kvetching or for like commiserating, now we totally um, know that, that God that doesn't fly with him. Like he wants us, no matter what, to always have something good and positive come out of our mouth. So I think it's so exciting that, number one, that (laughs) this awakening is happening. And finally, the prophecies are starting to come true where people are saying, you know, I want to know the Torah. I I know that if I'm going to really reach my full potential, it's going to be through God's wisdom. And and thank God, praise God that the exact words, every letter, every dot, every comma, every space, exactly what God gave to us has been preserved on the Torah scrolls. And So many Jews went to their death over the centuries so that they would have this gift so that when the nations were finally ready to say, praise God, I finally recognize and know, I finally see the plan, I finally realize what's happening, I finally have an appreciation for what God is doing with Israel and the preservation of his wisdom on the Torah scrolls and the Jews are doing the job 
and the nations are starting to recognize and know and appreciate this is a, a great thing that's happening. So that's, that's number one. So I just want to say I'm, I'm excited because I know that each one of you probably were not uh, raised in raised knowing anything about the Torah, having really any thoughts about Israel. And somehow there's, there was an awakening with me and I was drawn to it. And I know that that's happening with you. And so the prophecies are being fulfilled. <laughs>